The Seven Bridges Cancer Genomic Cloud, powered by Velsera, or CGC for short, is part of a larger ecosystem, the NCI Cancer Research Data Commons, or CRDC. The CRDC is a cloud-based data science infrastructure that provides secure access to a large, comprehensive, and expanding collection of cancer research data. Users can explore and use analytical and visualization tools for data analysis on the cloud. The CGC is a cloud resource, highlighted above, that was built to not only provide access to CRDC data from several data nodes, but the analytical tools to analyze it too. The Seven Bridges Cancer Genomics Cloud, powered by Velsera, is a cloud platform that allows you to analyze cancer data where the data lives, using the computational speed of the cloud. This means that an analysis that usually takes one weekend to complete on your laptop can be completed in 10 minutes running on the cloud. The CGC provides powerful, yet easy-to-use interfaces to empower cancer researchers to draw new insights from the over 3 petabytes of data that are currently being accessed by more than 7,000 users. These users have, in total, built 80,000 workflows and utilized 1,500 years of computation on the CGC. The CGC is a stable, secure, and highly customizable cloud storage and computing platform. And as the CRDC ecosystem has grown, the CGC has grown alongside of it to provide a user-friendly portal to serve researchers, clinicians, data scientists, and more. Seven Bridges, which is part of the Cancer Genomics Cloud ecosystem, provides a secure workspace environment to do data analysis and collaborate. Analyses can be set up completely using a rich graphical user interface or through scripting via API calls, depending on your preferences. Private cloud-based JupyterLab, RStudio, and Galaxy environments are also available with new environments coming soon. Cloud Compute and Cloud Storage are available on AWS or Google. Easily link an S3 bucket to the platform. There are hundreds of accessible and hosted pipelines to get you started. As mentioned, you can perform custom tertiary analysis and visualizations directly in the cloud using our R and Python tools. Our latest additions include Galaxy and an integrated imaging service. SAS will also be available in the coming months. These work functionally the same way you're familiar with on your computer, but a lot faster on the cloud. Welcome to the main dashboard for the Seven Bridges Cancer Genomics Cloud, powered by Velsera. Here, you'll have access to publicly available data, tools, and more. Let's take a look around. On the left-hand side of the screen is a space for projects. These are all projects that I've either created myself or that I am collaborating on. You can also access these projects by clicking on the Projects tab along the top blue banner. On the right side of the screen is a window for displaying recently completed tasks, or on the other tab, recent Data Studio instances. Scroll down for some helpful information on getting started. Here we have links to helpful, helpful information like the Quick Start tutorial or several other guides. You also have the option to hide this once you become comfortable using the platform. If at any point you feel that you may need help, find the blue question mark button on the bottom of every page. Once you click this, you'll be given context-specific links that vary to reflect what's on your screen. You'll also be able to contact our 24-7 support team who can help you with your next steps. To get started on the CGC, Navigate to the top blue banner and select Projects, and then Create Project. You can also find this button along the very bottom here. Once we select Create Project, you'll be asked to give this project a name. And then select whether this project will contain controlled data. If this is checked, you'll only be able to invite members to the project who have the proper permissions. For now, I'm going to uncheck this and not use any controlled data. You'll select which billing group should be associated with this project. Just a reminder to everyone, if you register for an account on the CGC, 
the NCI provides $300 worth of cloud credits as pilot funds. Then you'll select execution settings. So you can keep spot instances on or off. The reason to keep them on is they can significantly reduce the cost of your task. And then you can also select this reuse option. So what this means is if you are running a long workflow, you can also select the reuse option. What this means is that if you are running a multi-step workflow that fails on say the second to last step, you don't have to start over when you rerun it. It'll just take the last successful step and move forward from there. There's also an option for advanced settings. So you can choose to block network access or allow network access. If you are planning on using Docker or downloading our packages, you should select allow network access. Once you're ready, click create. From here, you'll be taken to a new project space. Again, on the left hand side, we have a description. So you can easily modify this description by clicking add description along the bottom. And then this space allows you to type a description in Markdown. If you're unsure what that looks like, you can click this link for some information on how to do different styles. For now, I'll just do hashtag for a heading and then say, this is a new tutorial project. Once you're ready, click save. And there you have a new description. You can also invite members to this project. So click on invite new members to easily invite anyone by looking up their email address or username. So I'm going to invite my colleague Sarah, for instance. I can choose to give her write, copy, or execute permissions, as well as an admin permission setting, which is all of the above, plus she can then add her own member members. I'll just leave it at write, copy, and execute, and click invite. Now she is a member of my project. You'll notice some additional tabs along the top here. We have files, apps, tasks, and data studio. So let's first click on files, and this will take you to a new page where you can add your own files or search for publicly available data. So if you'd like to search publicly available data, you can choose to use Case Explorer or Data Browser to look up repositories like TCGA or Target. Um, there are also public files that have been uploaded by users as well. There are many ways to upload data. You can move files from project to project. You can connect a server. You can also connect a volume or import from a manifest, say if you'd like files from the genomic data commons or the proteomic data commons. For now, let's click on Case Explorer and Data Browser. Let's go to Data Browser. Once we've selected Data Browser, you'll have many options to choose which data set you'd like to look at. Again, as I mentioned, we have TCGA, Target, CPTAC, and more. For now, I'm just going to select TCGA to show you that. Once you're ready, select Explore One Selected. From here, I will start with File. Once I'm ready, I can select investigation and narrow it down based on the investigation name. So let's say for this example, I'm interested in looking at breast cancer cases. I can select breast cancer and filter. Now you'll notice that the numbers here for file and investigation have been crossed out. So because I selected breast cancer as the investigation name, we went from 33 different investigations to one investigation. We can further refine this as well. So let's click back on file and let's say I want only open access files. I can click to filter by that. And again, these numbers have changed. We went from 53,000 files to 23,000 files. We can further refine this. Let's say experimental strategy that I'm interested in is RNA-seq for this. I can filter and now I have 1,231 files to choose from. Once you've filtered to your liking, you can select copy files to project and then select which project you want to move them to.
I'm going to move these to the tutorial project that I've just created. I'm going to add a tag that says TCGA so I can easily identify these and maybe RNA seek. Whoever you want to label these is fine. Once you select copy selected files, you'll have a pop-up that says they have been copied to your tutorial project. So we can either click on this link to get back to our tutorial project or go back to the projects tab along the top banner and select tutorial project. Either way is fine. Again, let's click on files and you'll see all of the TCGA files we selected should be in this project. Let's explore apps. So apps work kind of the same way. You can create an app or you can add apps from our public apps gallery. So let's first look at the public apps gallery. Once you select all options, we have over 800 public apps to choose from. You can either search for an app of interest, let's say alignment, just to see what comes up. Or you can look through the type and category. So if you're interested in, say, a taxi, you can click on that. And these are the public apps that are related to that analysis type. Clicking on any of these public apps will take you to a new page where you can see how the app was created, as well as uh, you'll be given a description and common use cases. You can scroll down and most of our public apps include performance benchmarking. So this gives you an idea of how much it'll cost to run this app. So as you can see, if you input two 45 gigabyte sized files here, it'll take about an hour and a half and cost $3. There's also API implementation that is offered in this app. Lastly, if you scroll down, you'll kind of see how the app was constructed once again. So you'll see the different ports. So these are the different input files, different app settings that you can change, and the expected outputs. For more tutorials, check out our YouTube page, type in the URL, or scan the QR code to be taken to our onboarding playlist, where we have detailed video tutorials covering topics from accessing hosted data all the way up to completing an RNA-seq analysis. If you're having trouble with the next steps or have any questions, don't hesitate to stop by our office hours. We hold these informal sessions twice a week, 10 a.m. Eastern on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Come in for a chat. We always love hearing from our users. Once again, scan the QR code to be taken to the Google Meet space.